humanity. We're standing here not because we believe in a system. We believe in us, and we believe in our own agency. And we believe that in our agency, we have the right to make a decision. Any decision being made about me and my family, I have to be a part of that decision-making process. Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. Forget the filibuster. That's the blunt message Joe Manchin had today for Texas Democrats and others who are fighting to save voting rights and were hoping that Senate Democrats would work on a so-called carve-out. After finally meeting with Texas state Democrats who came to D.C. Monday night to urge Congress and the president to act, Manchin told reporters that the filibuster doesn't need changing and that everyone should just move on. After posing for pictures, Manchin and the group confirmed that the filibuster rule never even came up in the conversation. Manchin told reporters this after the roughly one hour meeting ended. Forget the filibuster. Basically, we've all come to a total agreement that what we want is basically to protect voting rights. That's it. A voting rights bill with guardrails. That's all. And Texas State Representative Joe Moody, who has now become the first Democrat to suffer political backlash after being stripped of his leadership role as Speaker Pro Tem, said this after meeting with Manchin. I think enough people have discussed the filibuster with Joe Manchin. That's the elephant sitting in the room. He knows the Senate me mechanics and maneuvers better than we do. Everybody knows what the deal is. We'll leave the tactics up to him. All this as several black female voting rights activists and leaders, including the chairwoman of the Congressional Black Caucus, George, uh, Joyce Beatty, were arrested today while they were protesting in the Senate office building at a voting rights event. Joining me now to discuss is Texas Senate Democratic Caucus Chairwoman Carol uh, Allo uh, Alavaro, I'm saying it wrong, uh, Alavaro, Alvarado, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, scrambling your name, I've been trying to get this down on it, Alvarado, sorry about that, <laughs> who met with Manchin today, and co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Latasha Brown, who was the one of the people protest, protesting in the Senate building today, Senator, sorry for yeah. butchering your name, I'm really horrible with that, it, it came up crazy on my prompter, uh, not spelled wrong, but I just couldn't get it, uh, so, what what's happening here? It feels like you know, Mr. Moody was basically saying the same thing as Joe Manchin they, that we've come to some acceptance. Manchin said we all agree. Do all the people in the Texas delegation agree with Manchin that we should not even discuss the filibuster? Well, we figured that, as Representative Moody said, enough people have been on him about the carve out on the filibuster. So our goal was to just get the message across the dire situation that we're in right here in, uh, well, in our state, because we're under a deadline. The special session is just gonna go until the first week of August. And then the governor will call another special session and we're gonna have to continue to deal with this yet again. So one thing we left there um, in agreement with Senator Manchin is that something has to be done at the congressional level. We need something with pre-clearance. That's very important for a state like Texas who has a history of intentional discrimination and gerrymandering, and we know that we will end up in court. So having a pre-clearance provision in any piece of legislation is the key. So, so did Manchin commit to uh, pre-clearance uh, provision in anything that he would support? Yes, yes he did. He right, so, wants something, so he's basically, yes. Yes he So does. he basically he, agrees he, with the John, John Lewis bill. Yes, I know, I know that he's not embracing uh, S1 or H1, but the John Lewis Act uh, he seems to be much more open to that. I'm not sure if it's in, um, in that bill that, that he likes. 
So Latasha, I always say that one day I'm gonna get some t-shirts made that all my heroes went to jail. <laughs> that, 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 that Martin, Malcolm, you name it, they went because when you stand up to do the right thing, it's not always legal because sometimes the legal thing is the problem because slavery was legal and Jim Crow was legal. Right. You know, every mm -hmm. time somebody ferreted somebody out of, of slavery, they were breaking the law. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to break the law to help other people. It's another thing, whole other thing to break the law to hurt people. When people are trying to preserve the right for people to vote, they're breaking the law to help people. Tell us about the protest today and what you were trying to, you were trying to get across uh, uh, and what the feeling and the mood was among the protesters there. So, you know, let me start by lifting up uh, congressional um, leader, Julie Baby and also Melanie Campbell of Black Women's Roundtable, that ultimately what happened today is that we wanted to send a message to the Senate that we will not be deterred, that we deserve the protection of the law around voting rights, and that we need, it's not an either or a strategy, we need both. While yes, we need pre-clearance, we need the John Lewis Voter Advancement Act, that's a very different act than having the For the People Act. We're still demanding for the People Act and the John Lewis Voter Advancement Act. We're not gonna cherry pick what our rights are in terms of our voting rights. That fundamentally what has happened is that black women like literally led the charge in this last year to make sure that, that we literally turned out in record numbers. We turned our community out in record numbers. And as a result, what we're seeing is we're seeing this punitive measure. So we're not going to agree to any of that. Matter of fact, we're gonna push forward because democracy as it's laid out of the constitution has been aspirational at its best. It has not been achieved. And so our goal today as leading with the Black Women's Roundtable, that women activists, women who are elected leaders, women who are working as labor leaders, we decided to go over to the, uh, the Senate. We wanted to go straight in the Senate, in the Senate building, to really make our voices be heard, that we are not going to turn around. We are going to fight for voting rights. We want and are continuing to push for H.R. 1, SB 1, which is the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voter Advancement Act. The spirit it was high that the women that as we went over there, we sang freedom songs, we actually had a prayer. We literally are very resolved that what we are doing is this is about transformation. This is not gonna be a transaction that you can just check off a box to get rid of us. That is not what we seek. What we seek is really to have, if at the path of literally when we're talking about liberation, it's having freedom to actually be able to, um, be able to make decisions about what happened to your community. We believe that we have the agency, that we should have we have the right as human beings, as citizens of this nation, that we should be able to freely and fairly cast our vote without retribution, that we should have a protection, that there should be a federal standard that whether you live in Alabama or Iowa or Georgia, you should have equal access to the ballot. And so that is why we are relentless and we are literally going to focus and continue to focus and put the pressure, if that means going back to the Senate or protesting or getting arrested every single day for the People Act and for the John Lewis Voter Advancement Act. Senator Alvarado, you, you heard the, the, the passion with uh, Latasha was speaking about needing both acts. Manchin is basically saying there is a no-go uh, on the For the People Act, right? That, that, that the, the primary voting bill that everyone has been advocating for is a no-go because he's not going to support it and he's not going to support breaking the uh, change the filibuster to make sure that it could get through, even if he found a way to support it, because it would still require his vote. So that's essentially dead. A am, I re am I reading that wrong? We had Barbara Boxer on last night who was convinced that Manchin in the end would do something like a carve out that would allow this to pass. He is basically saying today, no deal, I'm done talking about it. Do you have any confidence that, that the For the People Act is not dead? Well, the votes may not be there today, but I certainly share Latasha's passion. We would love to have both bills passed the way they are. Uh, and by the way, this bill has been around even before the 2020 election. So this is not something new, this is something that many of us have been advocating for for quite some time. But 
Manchin knows the, the mechanics of the Senate. He knows what's going to pass and what won't. We in Texas, we are we're on a very short time frame because the House members, I, I don't know how long they're going to be able to, to continue to, to be out of the state. There's a lot of logistics when it comes to you know moving a, a large body like that. And uh, you talk about expenses and being away from families. We need that pre-clearance protection in federal legislation. Because as I said earlier, we will end up in court. This bill that was passed, the voter suppression bill, it makes it more difficult for African-Americans, Latinos, Asians to vote. And the disabled and our seniors our leaders in Harris County came up with a very creative system for people to vote in a pandemic, drive-through voting, where over right. 128,000 people voted. Yes, absolutely. Most of those were people of color. And the 24-hour voting, over 10,000 people voted. Majority of them were Latinos, African Americans, right. and Asians. So right. it, it's very, it's very blatant what's what's happening here. Right, but, but, but even with the John Lewis voting rights bill, even if that were to pass, even if Manchin says he supports that, you know, imagine a scenario last term when, when, when uh, uh, President Trump was, was in office and Bill Barr was at the Justice Department. You ask them for plea clearance, what are they going to say? Yes, we know that the presidency swings back and forth. So the, even the John Lewis Voting Rights Act is not enough because the presidency will change. And who are, and if the, if the Republicans have the presidency, they'll clear it, right? So, uh, Latasha, you are going to meet with the president, or going to the White House tomorrow, I assume, to meet with the president. What message do you take to him? Because we are now in the fourth quarter with, with, the, with the clock running out. What message do you take to him? You know, I think the message we're actually going to meet with uh, with Madam Vice President. You know, I think the message okay. who leads the voting rights charge. You know, I think the message that we're going to take is very clear. That one, we know that we need fundamentally we need we need federal legislation that is going to set a standard, a national standard for voting access in this country. That just as you said, Charles, that what we know is that presidents come and go, but what our rights can't be contingent upon whether the Democrats or the Republicans have power control in the in 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 dc that what we need and also to make sure that whether if you're not punished because you live in a a deep red state in the deep mm -hmm. south that literally that we all have equal access to the ballot and we think that the vote for the people act does that and the john lewis voter advancement act you know and for all those people or naysayers that say well it's already dead in the world water well that's what people said to lbj let's let's be remember that lbj mm -hmm. his shiny moment actually wound up being the civil rights of uh, the civil rights law yeah. but in fact he did not want to sign it he was very open open and public about he did not think it was the time nor was mm -hmm. he interested in signing it because it would actually split or bring a rift in the party but in fact he signed it why did he sign right. it because the public pressure literally created the the environment in which that is to happen and so we also believe you know those of us that live in the deep south we are we also believe we have seen the environment so mm -hmm. that we can actually move and advance an agenda that's going to look out for our communities Right. Senator Alvarado and Latasha Brown. Ladies, thank you so much for your time. Latasha, I hope that you will come back and tell us about your conversation with the vice president of the White House tomorrow. We will be uh, very interested to see what the White House has to say. Thank you. Thank you.